welcome to today's class on the Ayurvedic Yoga channel. Today, we're going to be exploring an introduction to balancing Vata Dosha through Ayurvedic yoga practice. So this includes a brief introduction to what the doshas are. There'll be more on that later at a later date, but just for an introduction to this topic, the doshas are considered to be three vital functions in the body. And they're each made up of the elements. So within Sankhya philosophy, where Ayurveda is born, that comes from India, it's considered that there are five elements. There's earth, water, fire, air, and space, or ether. And the whole material universe is considered to be made up of these five elements. And our body, the human body, is a reflection of that. Based on how these elements interact with one another, it creates a certain function in the body. These three main functions, these three main doshas, are vata, pitta, and kapha. Vata is the energy of wind, so it is air and space element. Pitta, just as an introduction to it, is fire and water. And kapha is water and earth. Together, these three generate all of the vital functions needed for the body. So vata dosha is responsible for all movement and all communication that happens within the body. All movement, all communication that happens between cells, between organs, within the nervous system. All of this is vata dosha. Pitta governs everything that is transformation and digestion. So even your brain interpreting what I am saying right now and taking in all of the sensory information is pitta dosha. You're transforming it into understanding. You're digesting that sensory information. And kappa, water and earth, is responsible for all structure. Think about your bones, your joints, your ligaments, your muscles and for all lubrication. So right now, if you can sense in your mouth, there is a little bit of extra lubrication, your eyes, all of your internal system, your joints, all of this is thanks to the water and earth element of kapha. But Ayurveda considers that while these are vital functions, sometimes these can become out of balance. So today we're just going to focus on when vata dosha gets out of balance and then work through the practice to balance it. Vata dosha is considered to be out of balance at a physical level when we have too much air, we have too much space. So what does that mean? At a physical level, this is when you have gas, when you have bloating, when you have dryness in your skin, you have cold hands and feet, or just feel easily chilled in your body. Down the line, this starts to turn into things like cracking and popping joints because there is too much air, not enough lubrication, and can lead to aches and pain as well. Especially when a pain situates itself somewhere and then all of a sudden it's in a different area, and then all of a sudden it's in a different area of the body, this is considered to be vata dosha because that pain is moving, because it's migrating around the body. And at a psychological level, vata dosha is considered to be responsible for any fear, worry, and anxiety. Because all of the diseases associated with vata dosha are considered to be outcomes of deficiency scarcity, not enough. And so at a psychological level, this impacts everything that is not enough. 
And at a physical level, we actually don't have enough, say, energy or lubrication or something to ground us. There's not enough grounding. There's not enough solidity. There's not enough fluidity in our joints or in our skin. So in order to practice yoga asana or other parts of yoga practice, to balance vata dosha, we want to practice in a way that is grounding, that is slow, that is steady, that strengthens to build strength, hold strength. Because vata dosha tends to be cold, we want our practice to be warming. We want it to warm up the body, the tissues, the muscles, the joints, bring in lubrication. But we do not want to overexert. So this is not meant to be a hot yoga practice where we are overexerting the body, where we're sweating out fluids. Because when it comes to balancing vata dosha, we actually want to conserve our energy. And we want the practice to build more energy by the end instead of having to use energy expended through the practice. So slow, stable, grounded, warm movement. So go ahead and place any notebooks by the side any note taking and sit up tall and we'll dive into our practice. Close your eyes. Start to become aware of the space you are in. That your body is surrounded by air that touches your skin. Become aware of the space occupied by your body. Become aware of the gentle moving of your breath. Even without having to control it, Vata Dosha is moving within you. Become aware of how your breath feels as it enters your body. where you notice it the most. In your nostrils, in your chest, in your belly. Notice, do you feel warm or do you feel cool right now in your body? Do you feel rooted and stable, heavy in your seat? Or do you feel light? 
Is it easier to focus on your upper body than on your lower resting extremities? Notice the rhythm of your breath, which is longer, your inhale or your exhale. Or are they the same length? Are you aware of which nostril is moving more breath? If not, you can use your fingers just to check. Check which nostril is more open. Close one nostril and close the other. Just develop an awareness of that. And notice now if there are any emotions that have been sitting in your body. where they're situated. Notice if the quality of your mind is very rapid, active, or if it's very dull, maybe you feel tired. Or do you feel clear and aware? These are some of the metrics that we'll be looking at our bodies through. Some of the ways we can assess how our practice affects our body at these levels. Open up your eyes. Place one hand on your belly button, and one hand very lightly on the throat. The belly button in Ayurveda, in, in Sanskrit, is known as Nadi. Nabi, Madhma, vital energy point. Breathe in and out, inflating your belly. The fingers gently on the throat are just to feel this area. Breathe in and out through Nabi. Belly button. Relax the abdominal wall. Relax around this area. Relax your hands down. We'll practice something known as one of the Shat Kriyas. Shat means six, Kriyas means actions. And some of these actions are sometimes taught as pranayam, even though they are Shat Kriya. Shat Kriyas are used as preparations for a practice. You may be familiar with Nadi Shodan, which is sometimes called alternate nostril breathing. But more than about the nostrils, it's about the nadis. It's about the energy channels moving through our nostrils than the nostrils themselves. It's not nostril shodhana, it's nadi shodhana. As well, we'll practice one today called Agni Sara. Sara refers to superior or high quality, and Agni is our fire, our ability to digest experiences, food, emotions. So for this practice, go ahead and stand up. We'll practice in a variety of positions.
first measure distance of the legs, half legs about hip distance apart. So where your fingertips meet your thighs. For this movement, it's about exhaling all of your air and then holding the breath out. With the breath out, the belly, from belly button, pulls up towards the throat, relaxes down towards pelvic floor, up towards the throat, and then pushes out again. Okay, you do this as many times as you can comfortably with the exhale. So we practice this together. For the first, bend into your knees. Bring hands, fingertips facing towards one another onto thighs, mid thighs. From there, straighten the elbows so that shoulders hike up towards the ears. Take a big inhale. Exhale all of your air out through your mouth with an audible noise. Then pull belly button in towards the throat, press the belly out, in towards the throat, press belly out, in towards the throat, press the belly out. Keep going until you need to inhale. When it comes time to inhale, you straighten it. The next place we'll do this, the next posture we'll do this, is on all fours. So you come onto all fours, and we'll practice this Shatkriya in this new position. So come onto all fours. Straighten out the angle of the back of the neck. Inhale into Nabi, into belly button. Exhale through the mouth with sound. <laughs> Hold your breath out. Suction belly up towards the throat and back. And keep going at your own pace. You finish, breathe into that. The next position will be in Vadakonasana. Vadakonasana. So bring soles of the feet together. Hands can be on the ground in front of you or back behind you. You choose. Inhale into belly and go for Agnisara. Suction from belly all the way up. Press out through belly button. The last position to try in is in a chair. So if you have a chair nearby, go for your chair. And you want to sit so that actually you're a bit on the edge of it. It's almost like your sit bones are on it, but that you can lean forward. So once again, hands on thighs, straighten elbows. Go for Agnisara in this position. So if you're feeling more heat in your body, this is because this helps move more fire. So this is helpful for vata dosha when vata dosha's digestive system gets weak. You can move your chair out of the way. Notice which of those was easier to access because it's not always standing. For some of us, for me actually, it's in a chair because where I can really get the most movement. So note that for later practices, for when we practice now, Lee, we'll be practicing that in that position that was easier for you. 